to a new episode of The Gist, an Info Nollywood production. So, we have a black president, they're doing, you know, Venus and Serena, doing big things across sports. We're just as black people, we've come a long way um, all over, but unfortunately, racism still exists. What is your take on that? Okay, does everybody here know what racism is? Of course. Right. All right, what is racism? For the people who don't know what racism is. What's racism? To me, racism is uh, when one race feels like they're superior over another race. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just in general. Okay, so are we all guilty of that? Definitely at one point in time, but I think that there's a difference in actually being a racist and actually believing it in your core, like in your being. There's another thing to joke about it. There's no one race that can say that they haven't done that. Right. You know, you make comments even amongst your friends. Um, it's funny because I always say at work, if we had to be looked at, we would all pretty much be fired because there's just a whole bunch yes. of, you know, funny, lighthearted stuff yes. going around. You know, for example, I think somebody had asked the question. I was amongst friends. Somebody asked the question, um, you know, did you... Did you vote for Obama? And the guy sitting next to me who was actually mixed was like, why do you ask us that? Because we're black. You know, of course, it's lightheartedness. But to some other people, it could really be racist because you're assuming that because I'm black, I automatically voted for Obama because he's black. Or you're assuming that because I'm Chinese, then I like rice. Right? Or you have a carryout. Or, <laughs> you, know, right? you know, but I mean, I'm African. I like rice. That's you know, right. So, I was going to say you the know, same thing. I mean, or you assume that because, like, you know, we were saying earlier, you know, people assume so many different things about different races, but there are people who generally believe something to their core in the sense of, you Big know, believing tree. that they're bigger or better than another race. That in itself is racism, you know, in a... Racism itself is negative, but it's that being a racism that really makes it hard for us all to come together as a human race right. and not look at each other as one being better than the other. Because right. realistically, if you look at it, that is not the case. If you look at individuals, you see people from all walks of life, all colors, all religions, all backgrounds, all languages um, that are excelling that are speaking same languages, that are doing like-minded things, that are working together. But does it still exist? Of course it exists. I mean, we're all racist now. See, I think traditionally, especially with, um, <clears throat> when you look at like colonialism and you look at parts of, you know, like South Africa or even when we were colonized, Nigeria was colonized by the British mm -hmm. or even here uh, in the United States with Martin Luther King when people think of, because that's a form of racism, but that's on a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. Because again, I think, and I don't think, for some people it, it, it's intentional, but I think for a lot of cultures it may not be. But I don't know if it's a personal pride thing where people just take pride in their, their, their race and like, oh, my race is better than your race because you can't speak English. But I think the problem, there's, to an extent that has its, it, it has its drawbacks, but I think it becomes detrimental when people now begin to put those thoughts into actions. But and that's when you and get bigotry, is, and that's where you get the racism of the Martin Luther King or apartheid. But in 2013, would do we really feel like racism is still very much out there, like when it was when Martin Luther King was around? It's, I think I it's mean, still... Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I don't think it's very much out there, but it still exists. You know, and there's some places that you go to. I mean, I visit, visited South Africa, and it's just like it's palpable. Like you could see it almost in the air, touch, feel. See it. what racism? How? How did you, you know? See it's it just now? like because you just feel like you know, since apathy, like everything is still shaky. You don't. I mean, I don't think it's settled yet. I don't. I think it's just something that's like brushed under the rug. Because when you go out to the clubs at night, you still see the blacks on one side oh. and the whites on one side, and you know, it's just affected the South Africans, the black South Africans that actually own the land, you know? <laughs> it's affected them so much in ways that, you know, they're very, they're very, I mean, they don't, they, they can't speak out for themselves. You can see that in every day because coming from a country where, I'm Nigerian by the way, coming from Nigeria where like, I don't think we had to, yeah, we had to fight for our independence, but we didn't have a situation like South Africans where, you know, an outsider comes in and takes over our country. So for us, we're very more outspoken, more aggressive. The British we know what we that? want. Mm -hmm. I mean, they did that, but you but know, it was like but it was back. right, exactly. Okay. And we we've we've grown from that. But right. the South Africans, you They're know, just it's fresh like out. yeah, and 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 even the the white 
South Africans that are there, it's are still very much like this is my country. Like I was born and brought up here. I mean, I, I mean, I was kind of yeah, I was kind of. I mean, on my plane South Africa, like I was kind of confused because I was sitting next to a guy. That was my first time. I mean, ignorance. Yeah, I was, I was sitting next to a white guy, and I'm like, "Where are you from?" I mean, he asked me first, and I'm like, well, "How about you? Where are you from?" And he goes, "I'm South African." I'm like, "Oh, you mean like you work there or something?" He goes, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm really South African. And I was like, "Oh, okay." okay. <laughs> well, I, I do think you know? that. Um, there's a difference between pride and discrimination to piggyback off of what you're saying about pride. Because, like you said, I'm from Nigeria too. They ask me, I'm going to say green and white, I'm going to mm -hmm. talk about my country. But at the same time, when somebody is discriminating against somebody, they've taken it past pride and now you're trying to hurt somebody or you're, you're having negative, a negative feeling towards someone. Um, so between those two, that's, that's where I think it gets, it gets kind of sketchy. Uh, sketchy. But, um, like we say, in this time, I think people with education, everyone's getting a lot better than it was before. Um, I think, I think it's right systematic. Necessarily. I think it's honestly, I don't think you have the physical racism or the mm. physical bigotry that we had, mm -hmm. you know, like during the civil rights movement. But I think it's just systematic. Yeah. But, okay, would you say now, when was the last time any of you guys experienced racism? Oh, oh, I was in Virginia. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was so in Virginia. I was at a gas station. <laughs> I'm about to tell you. I'm about to tell you. So I'm at the gas station. What part of Virginia, first of all? Oh, I don't know. By Reagan Airport. Oh, yeah? I, I don't know. Oh, wow. I don't know. That's it's very, very, just, it's mm. very mm. close. Right, by Pentagon yeah. City. I'm by Alexander Pentagon Arlington. City. So it wasn't like I was like in... Hicksburg, you know, like right out in the fields. I'm um, developed Pentagon City, Virginia, downtown Virginia, and I pulled into the gas station, and everybody's sitting in a line at the gas station. In the meanwhile, so they're waiting for these pumps here, but in the meanwhile, there are pumps on the other side. So me and my New York whip driving, I whipped around the parking lot. Nobody was on the the side where the empty um, gas pumps were. So I pulled up, I'm pumping my gas, looking at everybody else who's playing follow the leader and now they're waiting on a long line so one guy pulls up and was like there was a line and I was like yes for those pumps over there and these were free over here I said so why were you why didn't you use your sense and open your eyes and pull up he was like oh oh you know what you know what you are so I was like what am I <laughs> so he was like you're a nigger Oh no. Yes, in 2011. Oh, no. And what did you do? This was in 2011. I, well, I thought it was pretty funny because they don't even really use nigger anymore. It's called nigger. They really <laughs> want to do something. Yeah. So I said, I, I said, you know what? what I said, I, I, but uh, this is me here. I said, a nigger? I said, boy, what you know about a nigger? I said, you know what? You was a nigger lover. <laughs> so I just made up a song and started busting the song. Nigga, 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 love. Uh, oh my gosh, nigga, nigga, nigga. Like, he was so <laughs> what did you do at this time? At th that point in time, his mouth was just open and his face was just bright red. I said, It's okay, you love a nigga. You know what, you're good. Yeah. I know what I would have done. Okay. So I wasn't going to give him that. that. I wasn't going to give no, him no, that. No, 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 no. There's a subtle way to do what I would have done, huh. but I would have done what I would have done. Okay, what, would you have done? what would you have done? I would have just gotten out my car, slapped him, and then educated him. And then by the time you reached the high that's what I would have done. No, 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 no. Woo. Yeah, and it would be called... slap the white man in Virginia. Oh, yes, I would have. Oh, oh knock damn. me up, throw away the keys. Guess what? Racism would have really showed up at that time. Because I, 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 I don't car, take girl. lightly to insult in general. I'm yeah. one of those people where, you know, kind of off track here, but something as simple as good customer service makes a big deal. It's a big deal to me. So I will pick up a phone and call. So something like that in my face, and you're actually in my face, in my space, I'm not going to just sit there. Now, well, you know what, I see, the situation, and, it, and you know, people may look at it like, oh, well, you're giving him what he wants, you're doing this. No, 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 no. First of all, I'm a woman, okay? I would slap you across your face. It's the same thing as somebody walking up to a white girl saying, you, what's this word that's thrown around sometimes? I can't even think about it. What? It's, Which word? Which one word? of those words that if you say it in the white culture, it's like, <gasps> you know, how dare you use that word? And it's not Is coming it against right white now. people? Yeah. Is white it people, honky? Cracker? No, cracker? Women. Especially. Blondie, I don't know. No, it's okay. I don't know. But so anyway, I don't it's know. the kind of oh. word that requires a slap across the face. And that's a what cunt? I would have done. Yes, that word. Cut. I would have slapped him. Yeah, so, I mean, what about people that, um, you know, so they feel like, okay, because I'm a person of color, then um, I should experience racism. I mean, I, feel, I see some people that anything that happened, they're like, racist, yeah, racist. That's, that's what you call you know, overkill. Like, exactly. Unfortunately, I have to say that that's where I have an issue sometimes when it comes to 
my African American brothers and sisters. Okay, mm -hmm. but I've also learned that I have to understand that, you know, me being sure of myself, me knowing where I come from, my roots, my grandparents, great great grand, you know, knowing my history, my make it more complicated for me to understand when an African American is here saying you know, what they put us through, what they put us through. I'm just like, get over it. It's like a long time ago when you talk about slavery and racism. But I've found a new respect for the understanding of why That's it is more deep-rooted here. It is. Because it is. Because it wasn't until I experienced it from a point of view that when someone sees me, they don't go, oh, you're an African from Africa and you're an African-American. They just see, you're black. Mm -hmm. And so this is how I'm going to address you, that it really dawned on me that, wow, Okay, so this is real. This is more evident than it seems in my mind. It wasn't until I experienced it where I felt like, wow, okay, this is real. That's selfish. That's going on, you know? I think, that is very I selfish. Think for a, a, but for a black male. In what way? How is it selfish? Because you didn't, until it happened to you. Well, but no, I'm just, actually, I'm just messing just with like you because you're coming from exactly. Africa. Exactly. It's like. You didn't know. And, and that's yeah. because I, I, I still haven't experienced racism. Right. You so know, but like maybe you I do, have. Because you don't. for me, it's just like a thing where like I don't really think, I don't really put that much thought into it. But then again, I'm educated and I know the history of African Americans and how they got their freedoms and how. Slavery, I mean, but slavery. you know what? Maybe you Racism. experienced it and you just didn't know. Maybe you went to go yeah. eat it's, at a restaurant. What are you saying? No, no, I'm not. I'm not that wait, let me wait. wait so we're not over talking one another. <laughs> I'm not I taking that. I'm not trying to calm down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, no, no, I'm not taking anything away from not denying that, but what I'm saying is I think racism still exists, but it's just subtle, like, and it's a way that you maybe never can, even thought of it. Can I ask it. a question? Do you think that a will ever have another black president. Hold on, wait a minute. Can I finish? No, I want you to finish, but I also don't want us to lose time and not... No, no, no. We, 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 we might, we, we might. But you, you may have gone to a restaurant and where they sat you at the restaurant. So you're just trying to take me back in time to try to think of, oh, yeah. No, no, I'm not trying I to make you do... No, it. maybe I'm not trying to make you... I'm not trying to make you do anything, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Okay, so I was just saying my point was that Racism, it doesn't have to be that outwardly in front. You may have gone for a job for a job, and it's two candidates. One of them is white, one is in black. You don't know anything about that. They may have chosen the white person. And it could also be very subtle. That's my point. That's my point. That's my point. But it may also be good. It's not a bad thing. I'm just saying that. It is. And I also think that. And I also think that some people just think of racism in that way all the time. Like, oh God, I probably didn't get that job because I'm a person of color. And that tries to bring us back. Well, why don't you try to better yourself? To try to perform better at a job interview or perform better at your job. Well, what if it's not that kind of that scenario? No, I depends exactly. on the situation. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. But I'm saying that there's some people that oh, just of color, everything, right? Right. Everything. If anything happens right. to them, and but it's you, like you, you hold that. Oh, they cut my electricity off. Like, it's because I'm coming. No, but if you bill. even if you understand okay. where you come from, like I mean, you need to grow out of that. Black men are pulled over every single day. First of all, just because they're black, it's true. I think Africans have to be. You know what? I think Africans have to be sensitive, in that. I used to have, the, I didn't really understand until, until I took yeah. African American history. Yeah. By the time you have generational, psychological, emotional, mm. physical abuse that people begin to pass down to their children's yeah. children and they no longer know who they are, where they're from, who to trust, who not to trust. Like it's yeah. something, it's it, it's real. We didn't experience it, yeah. but it's it, it's there. It, it's it's crazy. It, but so okay, I'm, I'm not because see, I understand like, that. There's nothing but, I can do that no one. There's nothing. But people who are but now everything. Yeah, but now how do you get above that? Like you're not just gonna sit Education. down and just keep crying like, oh yeah, I'm a person of color and this is gonna happen. Education. Education. Oh, no, no, exactly. You need to grow outside of that for you to be able to succeed. No, but what, no, what for you to grow out of it, you have to have an opportunity to and and I get what you're saying and there I'm, is I'm opportunity here I think but. there are two different things here we're talking about apathy because if what if you're you are that person that did very well you matter of fact you graduated from your class the top yes. of your class you, you graduated from Princeton and again there are situations we don't know about racism just does exist and I agree with you there are people that use it just to their advantage to be lazy but now what about take the person that hasn't been lazy that has busted their plus scholarships straight A students they go to apply for some company on Wall Street they have the experience they have the educational background. They have the knowledge and wisdom to get the job done. But unfortunately, the person who's reviewing the application is racist. And they would rather have a white person who just graduated, who doesn't have any experience, come in and work for them than to have a black person work for them. Well, it seems like the topic of racism is something that is always going to be discussed because everybody's always going to feel like they're better than the next person. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it boils down to respect. Keep your thoughts to yourself. 
respect one another, um, and know that racism can't hold me back. Racism can't hold me back. That is it for this segment. I don't think anything can hold you back. That's right, girl. <laughs> Not even racism. <laughs> That's it for this segment. Please stay tuned for Trending Topics in Nollywood. Welcome. We are back with Trending Topics in Nollywood. So this week trending, it seems to be the trend now that a lot of our artists, a lot of our African Nigerian artists are collaborating with a lot of people. Um, um, what was that? What would I say? In, uh, in the American overseas. music industry, yeah, like, you know, like overseas. Mm -hmm. So, what do we think about that? Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Or it's not even a matter of it being a good thing or a bad thing? Because a lot of people are arguing, or some people, their take is, well, it's good to collaborate because you expand, mm -hmm. you get to, you know, right. broaden your horizons. And some people are saying, ah, oh, you know, with the originality, it's lost when you collaborate with, you know, somebody else, especially someone. From a totally different culture. I what think it's you, great. What is your take? I think they get a, a lot of exposure. Um, they see things differently. You, you're working with different uh, producers who've been doing things a lot longer, so they earn. They get a lot more experience in certain things that they might not have seen before. So whenever you can collaborate with anyone, uh, I think just the experience learning from someone else is great for them. Hold on, I hear silence to my left. Mm -hmm. The devil's advocate. Yeah. What's your take? <laughs> oh my gosh, What's is your that take? my nickname? <laughs> devil's advocate. Yeah. No, no, please do not call me that. Um, I think collaboration is a good thing, um, um, but not necessarily always the best thing. Like in the case of um, P Square and Akon in the Chop My Money video or a song, um, I just I thought that Akon took away from the song just a little bit. You know, he didn't really have the right accent. You know, we just kind of like... I mean, if you're speaking Pigeon English, like, you can't just really ruin Pigeon English. It's like, you know, there's there's an essence to it. So I think, it, you know, Akon took away from it a bit, and it wasn't as hot as the first um, song, the original song, I would say. But I don't know what BC thinks about that. I disagree. Oh, I, disagree. I disagree. Okay. <laughs> I'll be the other I know. Uh -huh. So here's the thing. I think collaboration is great. Why? Because... Music in Africa right now is hot, hot, hot. You know what I mean? So with that being said, we want that transition to be able to broaden our music to the world, okay? Right. Not just in parts of Africa, but literally all over the world. So you take an Akon who's established here. He's still African, but well accepted here. You bring in Peace Square that's established all over the place, but here in the States. And you now introduce this hot group to the Western world, they're going to accept them, but you need that collaboration sometimes in order for them to expand as well. So I feel like the original was, yeah, it was fantastic, it was hot. I don't feel like Akon took away from it. I feel like he just brought a different flair to it. So it's like any other music you hear, you hear the original, the original is what gets you excited, it's what makes the song hot. And then you hear some remix and you're gonna be like, oh, it was better when this person joined, when this person joined, when that person, but the song in itself, is it still hot, Akon or no Akon? Of course it is. But now Akon's on the track, people are like, who's this group P-Square? They're going to take notice of them, and they're going to realize what we already realized, that these boys are the hottest thing, period, right now, as far as I'm concerned. Like, P-Square is it, and once they really broaden themselves in this market... They're gonna take off on a whole nother level, and for me, that's exciting. You know what? I, mean, I have a question. Just, go ahead. I, I have a question. This is why, as you, as you were talking, my my brain and I got you excited. Spinning, with the my brain like, is spinning. Yeah. So I don't think there's anything wrong with collaboration, but I think maybe I agree with that. People can say. get worried because now this. I just want to ask: Is it possible for? people as they collaborate to begin to lose their identity and their original style and get caught up in the styles of the people Only that they're they collaborating oh, right. and they're that, is, that would be a challenge yeah. i think that would be a that challenge. would be the challenge because i mean we're already i mean we've been ever i mean most people in africa is they we, we're known to western music you know what i mean ever since the day of shadia do i mean even though she's nigerian but not really even and madonna and, Madonna. and you know all the i don't know what other older i mean i'm not talking about african musicians right, right. now but you know like they've already saturated our market way in the days those are the songs that i know before fela started to come out about i mean me growing up as a kid you guys are much older than me so i don't know you know but <laughs> she was old, so did she do that? <laughs> i did I think that's great for P Square just, all on its own. <laughs> I think the exposure for uh, P Square to the U.S. is something new 
for the U.S. to hear, you know, yes. as far as African artists and very good music. And, uh, I, and I agree with know, that. I'm not they, saying collaboration is a bad thing, but I'm going with what Snutter said, and which is what I said while, in the beginning, mm. is that we don't want to lose... <laughs> We're not going to. Like, yeah, I feel like there is this. Like, get over here. Here's the reason we're not going to lose it. You guys are not, you guys, and maybe I'm just saying it, but I'm feeling like you're not having faith in the fact that our beats are hot, you know, our, our, our drums exactly. and all that. No, it's not and like I don't think that it's going to be lost. If anything, I think it's going to actually expand the Western world's music because now they're going to be open to new beats and new ideas and new, like, puns on music and movements and stuff that Listen is literally just yeah humanity. right right that 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 is like right now i mean look at them they're all going there to perform and stuff but a lot of them are also there in the studios going wow look what are these people doing what's going on why do these people love their music so much i look at it like it's going to allow the western world to accept our music is going to allow us to come in more full force. And that what and you it's said. already starting. BET, recognizing our artists. Right. First time The bunch, ever. two okay, faces. They didn't working recognize, with Mary J. Yeah, they didn't recognize Snoop. them. I mean, Kelly Carpenter. They didn't recognize them as artists collaborating with American artists. They recognized them for their individuality. That's why American artists want to collaborate with them. And I think the intention is to bring their flair into this and I understand that it. and just so y'all know I'm actually you know I'm leaning just a little bit both ways just both <laughs> ways why because I, I'm going I don't think there's anything wrong with collaboration I'm not taking anything away from that so I just wanted to add that we should be careful so that we don't lose ourselves right. in the collaborations but mm. I agree so Cynthia don't feel like I've sold you out eh? and <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. All men to his own opinion, but I'm saying that if our artists and our production stars do have the same passion that you have, you know, it's all it all boils down to the negotiation table. If an American artist comes in and we already know that they have this technology, they do things better, and they're like, no, 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 I don't think that sounds right. Let's do the beat this way. You're like, okay, yeah, yeah, Akon, yeah, yeah, your beat. You know, exactly. So I'm just saying, if they go in with your but mindset, you no, no, listen, if they go in with your mindset, you know, and saying like, no, I think our beat is hot, mm -hmm. and we should go with this beat, you know, and Akon, no, I don't, yeah, your, yeah. your, your beat, you know, but it's just like, but think we're, about more, it. we're more <laughs> likely, to we're more together. likely to be swayed to what, because it's already mainstream, but think you about know it. what I mean, and they're bringing a lot more to the table hey, than we are, but think about at it. this Akon moment, came onto P Squared's beat, mm -hmm. they didn't change that beat for Akon, no, I'm not saying that this particular one is changing. I'm just saying that this is potential problems that we could face mm -hmm. in terms of changing then, then the artists would do themselves the a we, disservice if they allowed. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm, right, right. Think about it. Well. Okay, Banky. Do you guys all know who Banky? Banky. Right. Double. Yeah. Right. Love him. Okay. Good friend. But here's the thing. He decided to make a transition from here home, and yes, at first it was hard because he's very westernized in his style of music. If you listen to the original Banky before he went home. But the one thing that I do appreciate is that he still makes the kind of music that he likes to make, but he's collaborating with the artists back home. Yes, he's from Nigeria and all, but he's established his music here. But he still took that style of music back home, and even though it was harder for it to be accepted, he had to be smart. Okay, how do I get them to still accept my style of music, but still collaborate with the music the artists here and that's exactly what he did and now what? I mean, not just okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Have done that. hold on wait a minute you know, am i ah oh. oh. see this always <laughs> one good <laughs> jazz <laughs> thank you so much for watching let us know what you think at our website www.infonollywood.com you can follow us on twitter at info nollywood and you can also like us and check us out on facebook until the next time out.